I'm Dr. Alak Gopalakrishna Gokhale. I'm cardiothoracic transplant and minimal access surgeon. We all know one of our main goals in life is to stay happy and healthy. If you want to stay healthy, we have so many organs in the body, all of them should work nicely. And every organ is very important, but each one does its own work. For example, we have two lungs in the chest, one on the right side, one on the left side. Whenever we take a deep breath, the oxygen from outside goes into the lungs and the lungs will take away carbon dioxide from the blood and take the oxygen from outside. This way it purifies the blood. Then this blood is pumped by the heart to all the organs in the body so they can work well. Sometimes these lungs don't do their work for various reasons. In other words, they are not able to give oxygen to the blood and take away carbon dioxide. Imagine what happens if the lungs don't work. Every time we are walking, talking, without our conscious effort, we keep breathing almost about 10 to 15 times every minute. And if we can't breathe, then we can't talk, we can't walk. Because every time we put an effort, the body requires more oxygen, we have difficulty in breathing. Imagine a patient who cannot breathe, who cannot even go to the toilet by walking because they become short of breath. There are many conditions that can affect the lungs. Actually, with one lung, we can survive very well. The nature has given us two lungs so that we have a lot of reserve. But these lungs can get affected by various conditions. The moment we breathe the atmospheric air, if there are any bacteria outside, they can come into the lungs and affect the lungs. So infections are very common. And if the infections are not treated in time, the lungs can get damaged, people sometimes go on ventilator. Many a time these infections are curable. However, there are a few conditions which can damage the lungs. The lungs are like sponge, but when they are damaged, they become like a solid rock and the oxygen and carbon dioxide won't be able to go through the walls of the lungs. One of the common conditions is called chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. You know of patients who have got bronchial asthma. Sometimes suddenly they become breathless. When we give some medicines, their breathing gets better. When they're not treated well, over a course of time, the lungs can get damaged in these people. And then the lungs become like rocks and the oxygen and carbon dioxide won't diffuse. So previously they were getting symptomatic when they were getting these asthmatic episodes. Now even at rest, they become breathless. Another condition that can affect is interstitial fibrosis. We do not know what exactly is the reason. Maybe viral infections, bacterial infections, we do not know. But the lungs, instead of being as a spongy structure, become like solid structures with a lot of fibrosis inside the lungs. Then again, oxygen won't, carbon dioxide won't be able to diffuse. There are a few more other conditions called sarcoidosis. They're all rare conditions. But whatever it may be, end of the day, when the lungs are not working, people become breathless, they cannot walk, they cannot do their uh, activities. And when we check the oxygen saturation on the finger by putting an oxygen saturation probe, normally it should be somewhere around 98 to 99%. It becomes like 90% when they walk for a few feet, then it becomes like 70%, 60%. Then we check blood gases in the arterial blood. We take a sample from one of the arteries, check it. Oxygen pressure in the blood should be around 80 to 90 millimeters of mercury when we are breathing the ordinary room air. But in these people, it becomes like 30, 40. Carbon dioxide increases, oxygen comes down. When the oxygen levels are low, the pulmonologist will give some medicines to improve the oxygen levels. If it is not helping, then we give oxygen from an oxygen concentrator, either through nasal prongs or through a mask, so that they take more oxygen to the lungs. That will help them to some extent. During this time, when they are not able to walk even till the kitchen, now they can walk till the kitchen, see if they can maintain, they can be maintained on the oxygen supplementation. Some of the patients require oxygen almost 24 hours. They will not be able to go out, they will not be able to do any activities. They will be requiring more and more oxygen. All these concentrates can give only like about four to five liters per minute, cannot give more oxygen than that. At that situation, when the patients are less than 60 years of age, both lungs are damaged, they are requiring a lot of oxygen supplementation, their life activities are restricted, then one of the options we have is lung transplantation. What it means, we remove the damaged lung, one or both lungs, then replace them with the normal lungs. How do we get normal lungs? Usually we take from a brain dead person. What happens is sometimes following accidents or when people have got bleeding in the brain, the brain gets damaged. Those people become unconscious. Then a team of doctors will see these patients. When they declare that this patient is unlikely to recover, 
from this injury. There are certain set criteria by government. They follow this criteria. Then after another six to seven hours, one more set of doctors will come and re-examine the patient. And they also feel that this patient's brain is totally damaged. In the next few hours, the heart and lungs are going to stop totally working. In that situation, if that person's attendants, they agree to donate these organs to save some people who are on deathbed, then we can take the lungs from there, bring them and put back onto this patient who has been waiting with the damaged lungs. So when we put those lungs, the new lungs from another person, to this patient who has got bad lungs, then we may either change one lung or two lungs, depending on the situation of the patient uh, and the diagnosis of the problem that caused this uh, damaged lungs. For example, someone has got infection in the lungs, which caused the damage to the lungs. Then we have to change both lungs. If it is non-infective condition like COPD or interstitial fibrosis, then we generally change one lung, usually the right lung. After this, these people have to take medicines lifelong. These medicines are called immunosuppressants. When we bring a lung from some other person and put it here, the body will recognize it is not my part. Then it tries to kill that part. To prevent it, we have to give these drugs. It will cost about 30,000 rupees per month for these medicines, and the people have to take them lifelong. You, they can't skip even for one day. How much doses to take, what drugs to take, we, the surgeons will decide based on certain blood tests, how we are recovering, how the body is responding. There is another aspect to this. If the drugs dose becomes too much, then the body immunity comes down, and these patients can develop infections. Especially the moment we breathe, the bugs go into the lungs. So lung infections become very common. So we have to do a tight rope walk between preventing rejection and then preventing infections. So for this reason, people need to follow the doctor on a regular basis, do the test, take all the precautions like avoiding contact with the people who have got infections. Such things are very important. Once we do these things, people who have been bedridden before, now they can get out of the bed, go to the work, do their jobs, and whatever they were doing before, either a job or business, they can resume that, have a, lead a normal life. The other aspect to this, how long will this work? This is not a curative operation. Once we change the lung, it doesn't mean that the person becomes totally normal. It's not like that. These people will live for a long time with an excellent quality of life. There are people who have participated in uh, uh, Olympics, various uh, games, following a transplantation of various organs. Similarly, these people can resume normal activity. Many of these patients live for more than five to 10 years, provided the precautions are taken. There are people who can live even longer than that, but there is no way we can predict. Generally, the life expectancy, the quality of life, they uh, last for about five to 10 years after lung transplantation. There are very few teams in India which have done lung transplantation successfully. Our team is the first team in the state of Andhra Pradesh to have done lung transplantation successfully. Once we decide a patient requires a lung transplantation, we do a battery of tests, and if those tests are fine, then we keep the patient in the waiting list for lung transplantation.